Welcome back to another podcast for Owners and Managers Academy, uh, where our purpose, our mission is to build businesses by building relationships. And uh, I am here. My name is Shannon Murphy. I'm here with uh, my guest host, Maria Landers and Missy Brewer. Maria, how are you doing this lovely day? I'm doing well. I'm excited to talk about boundaries today. I am too. Yeah, one of my favorite subjects. Missy, welcome. How are you doing? I am great. Boundaries are going to be exciting. <laughs> well, I hope so. Um, I know that you are um, really keen on the non-negotiable section that we're going to talk about with boundaries. So it's a yes. it's a it's a big one for me as well. And uh, listeners, I'm going to be the lead on our conversation today. Um, but I want to start by just talking about what boundaries are and what they aren't. Uh, boundaries are not me forcing my will on somebody else or agreeing to someone else's will forced on me. Boundaries are part of the discussion that happens when you enter into a relationship with people, or at least they should be. And you do this naturally when you develop relationships with your friends and romantic relationships and that kind of thing. Like there are moments where you talk about expectations and boundaries and that, and you, you find out if you're a good fit, you're a good match. And all I want to encourage all our listeners to do is to consider that because you're in a relationship with your employees and your managers and each other. And, you know, there's a lot of relationships happening in business. And that relationship still needs to have, like an outside the business relationship, a conversation about boundaries. Right? So it's nothing to be intimidated by. It's nothing to be like, uh, th th I have to win. I have to get my way. It is part of just the relationship conversation. Um, I have a, a, a quote that I want to share with everybody. And this quote is really referencing a story from the Old Testament in the Bible. Now, I'm not turning this into a, a preaching sermon. We're not going to uh, pass a hat around to all the listeners asking for a tithe <laughs> today. But uh, there's a story about Abraham and Abraham uh, being told to sacrifice his son um, on, a, on a mountain, on an altar. And that is an analogy of what I think we have to do internally when we're talking about boundaries. Many of us, most of us want to be liked. I don't know a lot of people. There are some, but I don't know a lot of people that approach every single day with, I'm really looking to, to uh, tick a lot of people off today, right? Mm -hmm. Most of us want to be liked. We want to be likable. We want to be liked. We want to like other people. Um, and that's just a, a basic human instinct. The challenge becomes when that need to be liked overrides the need to be effective. So like Abraham, uh, almost sacrificing Isaac, he didn't. If you're not familiar with that story, he didn't kill his son. Um, like Abraham, almost sacrificing his son Isaac, the need to be liked in our business must sometimes be sacrificed on the altar of the need to be effective. And that's mm -hmm. what boundaries will help us do. Uh, ladies, any comments or thoughts on where we started there? No, I think that's a great place to start. You know, I think it gets to the core of why do we not set boundaries to begin with and maybe some of our struggles that we're going to talk about today uh, when it comes to boundaries. So I think that I think that was a good way to, you know, maybe set the stage for that. Thank you. Missy, anything on your side? Absolutely. I, I agree with everything that you guys are saying. Let's dive in. All right, let's talk about why. A uh, couple of things, three things really that we're going to get from setting our boundaries and having this discussion and uh, being in this relationship. Number one, workplace boundaries build trust among the team members. Like once you know who I am, what I'm about, what's important to me, what is considered a line in the sand, you're able to trust me more because I'm being vulnerable and exposing that on the front side. I'm not hiding an agenda or hiding something on the back end. That trust and that, that trust that we develop with each other at the beginning starts to build resilience in the team. If, you've, if you have a team or you've ever been a part of a team that was like the first sign of, of issue or the first sign of challenge, it just fell apart. Well, part of that can be, gone, can be found in how we started that relationship. It wasn't built on good, strong stuff. So it wasn't able to survive those challenges that came in. And of course, boundaries should help contribute to a higher performing environment. 
you know, once I know where my lane is, once I know what my expectations are and what is or is not uh, part of the negotiation process, I can hopefully tune into the work that I'm doing and what's expected of me and perform better. Uh, that trust and the respect and the open communication, uh, and this is the second point, that trust, respect, and open communication um, are needed for successful workplace boundaries. Like you can't have successful boundaries without trust and respect and open communication. And I want all the listeners to hear open communication. Sounds crazy to say. But as a business owner, as a manager of people, I prioritize bad news over good news. I really do. Good news, I love to hear, but I'm not worried about we have to have actionable solutions on good news. Right? Good news is happening because things are working as we want them to or better than we anticipated. Hey, let that roll. Let that, let that go. But bad news, uh, especially bad news that is affecting negatively the business, I need to know about that ASAP. Well, if I don't, if I don't um, cultivate an open communication or I get emotionally reactive when somebody brings me some bad news, I'm basically cutting off that communication. So mm -hmm. please, when you're talking about boundaries, you're thinking about what goes into building this successfully, please pay attention to that open communication and check yourself before you wreck yourself with that. Because a lot of us <laughs> get emotional a lot yeah. of us get emotional when yeah. bad news comes, right? And it, and there are emotional things. I, I I'm not saying you should you should be a robot. Mm -hmm. I'm saying to control yourself in the moment. Well, and Number let me three. can yes, I add please. that? Um, yeah. You know, for anybody who maybe is trying to figure out, like, you know, hey, we're talking about boundaries, but then he's over here talking about trust and respect. Like, connect the dots here that you have to have the open, he's saying you have to have the open communication. You have to trust them. They have to trust you. And there has to be mutual respect before the boundaries matter. Like you won't be able to get the boundaries in place. They won't understand your boundaries. You might not understand your, your employees boundaries. If mm -hmm. you guys don't have that mutual trust and respect and the open communication to establish that. So I just, I, I wanted to nutshell that a little bit to help anybody who maybe was struggling with connecting boundaries to that concept. I think that's a great addition. Yeah. Thank you for that. Number three, and Missy's going to talk a bit more of this uh, as the podcast develops, but number three, effective boundaries are set collaboratively. Like mm -hmm. boundaries are not a one-way street, everybody. Right. Yes, owners have boundaries, managers have boundaries, and employees, associates have boundaries. Right. If you're hiring somebody that your hours or your expectations or whatever are in direct conflict with their non-negotiable boundaries, you are... You're just creating turmoil and chaos and friction. You're better off saying, hey, I don't think that there's an opportunity here based on your non-negotiables and what our expectations are. So thank you for your time. I wish you the very best. We're moving on. Mm -hmm. That is a much better approach than saying, oh, we got to have a warm body. Let's just use this. For <laughs> yep. Right. Some of the stresses that we have in our life, ladies, it's are stresses that we've adopted, honestly. Right. Yes. Absolutely. Somebody wanted to send me a bag of snakes. I don't have to open them. I don't have to accept them. <laughs> right. I can return to sender. So. Well, it's funny. Right. We just, our office just went through hiring and we had a lady that came in and right out of the gate said, here is my child's uh, volleyball schedule. And yes. these are the games, the ball games that I want to be a part of. And you know, ultimately, we decided that that was going to wreck the boundary of here's when you're required to be here. And it would it would throw off kilter the environment that we've created that we, you know, we love and respect each other enough in our in our business that, you know, everybody shows up and they're held to the same standard. And we couldn't hold that individual to the same standard if we had allowed her to leave early for those games um, versus never having anyone else do that. And so, yeah, collaborating with her on that and and like you said, ultimately deciding that even though she was she would have been an amazing fit for our team, that would have crossed a boundary that would have taken us into a territory to cause more problem down the road. That's even right. if it wasn't with her, like she may have been great and even the other staff could have been understanding. Um, but it just it almost would have broke my own boundary of, well, this is our business and these are the, you know, the hours we would need someone there. And, you know, 
what what is that going to what is that what kind of chaos is going to add to my life if I were to break that own you know my own boundary with with what we're trying to accomplish in our business so um, just a, just a real world <laughs> scenario that literally happened this week um, to kind of add to that yeah it's a great example and, and Missy how many times have you seen it in the corporate retail world where mm-hmm. there are the boundaries set the expectations set and then we have this one that has uh, seemingly an exception to the expectations yep. and they give grace and we work with them. How often does that create more trust with the remaining team members? It doesn't, does it? It's, it it mm-hmm. starts to invade that and corrupt and, and be corrosive with the team members, right? Yes. You know, now one of the things that I, that I will tag on with that is that as we're looking at um, boundaries or non-negotiables that certain people have, you know, I, I worked um, and still do work with a lot of women that are business owners and they, their first priority is being a mom and is showing up for their family. So if they are sick, it's very important that they understand who their next up person is to come in because they're non-negotiable is leaving their kid with the sitter when they're sick. Right. Right. Um, I've worked with a young lady and one of her uh, big boundaries was that she was going to, no matter how big her business grew, she was going to make her husband's lunch every day. Hmm. And to some of us were like, that's crazy. And no, thank you. I would never want to do that. (laughs) But for her, it made her so happy to know that she was offering him nourishment and she was giving him little love notes in her notes or I'm sorry, in his lunch. And, you know, I, I sit back with my clients for their boundaries and I ask them to send me their calendar and to put on their calendar what their non-negotiable times are. Make the, and it can be anything. You know, I have people that, that church is something that, that they will never work during that time. That's right. the time they go. That, that, you know, one of the weirdest ones to me was that lunch situation. And that's why I use it as an example because I'm like, even I was like, oh, okay, you know what? None of my business. That's her non-negotiable. So whenever we're looking at at hiring or our staff members, also realize that others' non-negotiables can all play well together. So whenever I was hiring larger teams, yes, Doc, you're right, that if I was just allowing this one person to show up 15 minutes late every day, that would create a, a wobble effect inside and everyone would be like, why does she get to do that? But if I had someone who needed to leave 20 minutes early every Thursday... And I was understanding to them or, you know, bend, but don't break is what I'm saying. So Mm -hmm. understand what your business can take. And that's a huge part of retention as well. Mm -hmm. Knowing who you've hired, knowing who you're involving yourself with. And it's the same way as accountability. Whenever we're looking at these non-negotiables that people have, I had a lady that was like, I will never stay like my blood sugar gets really messed up. Like I'm going to clock out for lunch every day on time no matter what, like, I just, I feel terrible whenever I don't. Okay. That's all right. Right. Within the job that she was in, that was all right. Not every job, but as, as I realized that I was giving staff the opportunity to have their non-negotiables and set their boundaries, Mm -hmm. my team all worked well together because they also understood, Oh, she needs to get her child on the bus or, Oh, he, he, like he loves eating lunch with his son every Thursday. So he is going to be gone for an extra 15 minutes it created such a harmonious effect with inside of my team. So I don't want us to always think about boundaries or non-negotiables as a bad thing. Right. I want to embrace them. Yeah, that team building element, Missy, it, you know, it's like a jigsaw puzzle. All the pieces don't need to fit with me as owner or fit with me as manager. All the pieces have to fit together. That's the only way we're going to create a beautiful picture. All right. I want to talk a little bit about pitfalls before we get into uh, how to set these, give some tangible uh, advice on what to do. Uh, Pitfalls when you don't set boundaries or don't set them the right way or they're not healthy for everybody. Uh, I call it the three C's. You're going to have confusion. You're going to have contention and you're going to have corruption. Right? Mm -hmm. Confusion, contention, corruption. Without boundaries or proper boundaries or healthy boundaries, you're going to create confusion in the people that you are building a relationship with. Mm -hmm. And I hope you understand that based on what we've already covered so far. Confused people are not confident people. People Mm -hmm. who aren't confident cannot approach the job or the duties with a uh, with a uh, a complete like uninterrupted or undivided mind about what they're there to accomplish. Yep. Contention. When the boundaries are not clear, when they're coming last minute, or they seem to be always changing, you're building contention emotionally with that person. 
they may not say anything, but they're going to begin to harbor resentment. And now they're going to be talking to uh, their significant other about, well, the job is this and I have this and, oh, I was promised that, but now it's this. Listen, Mm -hmm. if that person at home is not supporting this company or supporting this relationship, that person who at home is going to win, right? They're going to, you're going to yeah. possibly lose good people. Mm-hmm. And it all goes back to, to the fact that we just didn't handle our business of the business on the front side. Yeah. And then corruption, corruption of the relationship. As these things build, as the emotional issues build, it gets to a point where it just becomes too much. And people are very unlikely to say, I still respect you. I still like you. This just isn't the right environment for me much more common for people to now find a reason to dislike and hate and have, be anger or be angry and be, be bitter. Like there's an emotional component that gives us the power to mm-hmm. say, forget you, I'm out of here. And that's, that's really something that is unfortunate, but that's the reality of this, right? The end result is not just losing an employee, but corruption of that relationship. Ideally, I'd like for any business owner or manager to have the type of relationship where it's not beneficial for both parties anymore, and we move forward separately, but we still have an affinity for each other and a respect for each other and really want the best for each other on the other side of that. Mm -hmm. Now, these things, things, confusion, contention, and corruption happen because we don't communicate timely. We don't communicate with clarity. And we don't keep our emotions in check. There we are again with that emotion and that, you know, uh, taking your emotional component out of the relationship, especially when bad news happens. All right. Any other thoughts on that? Yeah, go ahead. I wanted to add in confinement, right? So you're confining that relationship if if it can't foster two way dialogue. So the manager talking to the staff or the staff talking to the manager, you're really confining that relationship and saying, here's here's where we're going to stay this little bubble and we're never going to go outside of it. So I think that that just builds on all of the things you just talked about. Yeah, thank you for that. That's a good C. We need to add that into the, to the mix there. <laughs> yeah, when we do the webinar, uh, Maria, we need to add confinement in there. All right. <laughs> All right. Uh, right. Let's, let's move on to how to set up the, the boundaries. Mm-hmm. And I call it the, this the relationship dance. Right. You're not dancing with your employees, everybody. Let's, you know, let's keep it <laughs> above board here. But you're in a dance because you're developing a relationship with people and relationships all develop with the same essential stuff, whether that's romantic or business or friendships. You got three types of boundaries that you're going to encounter that you should have as, a, as an owner or a manager and what you should be encountering from your uh, team members and associates and prospects. And if they're not willing to share this with you, uh, I would recommend that you dig in and ask them to come up with these. Three types of boundaries, neutral, negotiable, and then Mm non-negotiable. Now, these -hmm. these are kind of self-explanatory. We'll dive into it a little bit, but neutral. A neutral boundary is something that is really not that important to me, right? I just, I think this is the way it is, but I don't really have any reason for that. It's not like part of my culture or my belief system. Uh, It's not something that I've created because I've been burned in the past. It's just, hey, this is a boundary that that I I think is important to me or a boundary that we've set with other people, but it's not really that big of a deal. I've talked with business owners who they go really above and beyond in expectations of dress and appearance and that kind of thing of their team. And I understand appearance is important. Like we're building trust with our customers, but they get very like detailed about hair and makeup and that kind of thing. And and for most businesses, that's, that should be a neutral, right? You should be clean. Or a supermodel. (laughs) Right, right. Exactly. Well, you should be, you should be clean, hygienic, and, you know, look like there's some intention behind how you're dressed and how you're put together for the workday. But Mm -hmm. as far as getting into a lot of detail on that, to me, that that should be much much more neutral. Negotiable are ones that, again, exactly like it sounds. 
I'm not married to this. This isn't a hard and fast rule. This isn't something that is in stone for me. This is how I feel about it. How do you feel about it? Oh, this is a non-negotiable for you? Well, this is negotiable for me, so I can meet your expectations. I can meet your standard. This is how we develop that trust and that relationship. Like I validate your non-negotiable by not fighting you on that when it's a, a negotiable for me. Like, let me meet you where you are so we can move forward together. Like you trust me and I want to trust you with this. And negotiables, it's it's kind of scary, Missy, because you got to talk that out. But if you do that with the right tone and the right heart, the conversation will come to the conclusion that it's going to come to. And then lastly, of course, non-negotiable. As an employer, as a supervisor, as a manager, there are certain non-negotiables, right? I have high standards on character, like you're not going to be thieving from the from the place, time theft, uh, money theft. You're not going to be, you know, uh, talking gossip with, about other team members. You're not going to be throwing our customers or, or patients under the bus, right? There are certain things that are non-negotiable with me, um, and those are very rigid, and I don't shy away from sharing that with people. Because again, I want them to know exactly where I stand relative to this non-negotiable. And if this is a non-negotiable for them, then hey, so be it. Go ahead, Missy. I know you wanted to add on to this from the employee or the manager side as well. Sure. So I also just wanted to say that realize that negotiables, non-negotiables, boundaries, All of those things are sometimes learned behaviors as well. So whenever we have individuals that have had past experience or past relationships, they learn to set those boundaries based on the trust and the relationship that they've had with someone else. So that's why I expect, you know, a lot whenever I hire someone, what I see is that negotiables and non-negotiables change, right? Things as, as people develop and as they grow the same way in relationships, like, you, you know, you've talked about doc with your significant other, mm-hmm. you're going to change over the years and that your negotiables and non-negotiables are going to change. So be open to the fact that these are, they will change for sure. They will change, right? There will be certain things, uh, people that, you know, are religious. Generally, that is something that they always hold on to. That is they, they've got their, their faith and that's never going to change thankfully, but you've got other little small things that may change. So someone that says, I need to be off by four o'clock every day, that's a non-negotiable. Well, when their kid graduates high school or middle school, maybe that's not a thing for them anymore. So recognizing and realizing that those, that we can have shifts in those, but that we shouldn't try to force shifts in those. I think that is wonderful, wonderful perspective. Thank you for that. Maria, anything on this section? Yeah, you know, just think about what Missy was just saying. You know, I think that is it takes us back to the first point about having the trust and the open communication, because if somebody isn't comfortable enough, you know, if you're the business owner and, you know, it's our job, I'm, I'm going to digress slightly, but it's our job to make sure they know that we are supporting them. Like it's yes, the employee's job is to show up and give it their all and be a good team player. But like the the tone for everything that we do gets set you know, by us, you know, we're the one that has the vision for this business. We, you know, we're the ones that, you know, started this whole thing. And so I think sometimes, you know, as, as I've worked with other uh, business owners, you know, I think they lose sight of that and they think, well, it's their, it's their job to tell me, you know, when things change. And, and yes, it is. I mean, you can't read their minds, but did you set, you know, let me ask this question, as a business owner, did you set the environment for that? Mm. You know, did you create trust and respect and open communication? So, you know, there's a reciprocalness that that starts with us, you know, and more the more content that you you engage with us here at OMA, you're going to find that like that <laughs> that's almost like our gospel, right? Like you, yeah. you, my friend, as the owner um, is, is probably where maybe things got off track. This, you know, whether it's an expectation, whether it's a boundary, you know, so I say that in love and I, and to say I've made that mistake as well, but, um, I think, I think what Missy was speaking about there is, is really important to remember. They're not going to come and talk with you if you didn't create open communication in the first place. Amen. As the business (laughs) owner, as the, as the supervisor, the associate looks at you to set the pace on that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And if, if they don't feel comfortable talking to you, yes, they may be shy or, you know, other things like that. But generally, 
that's an indictment on who you are and the culture you've d- started. Right. This person. So, right. All right. We're going to wrap it up here with what to do when a boundary crossed. And this is going to be from the uh, employer, the owner, the manager's perspective. But it, it goes both ways. Again, this is a two way street. Uh, Maria, I also want to uh, give an opportunity for you to talk about what's upcoming with our events and stuff inside mm-hmm. of OMA as well. Yeah. So when someone car- crosses a boundary, right, as owner or manager, when I have a customer, a employee, when I have somebody who's crossed, crossed, car- crossed, crossed one of those <laughs> boundaries, it is, it is completely important and priority to reinforce that. Right. Yes. And you have to reinforce it the first time. Uh, you cannot wait for it to be done enough that now it's really ticking you off. Remember, there, were, there we are becoming bitter and angry to get the emotional power to have the tough conversation. You have to just gently reinforce, hey, this is our boundary. This is our expectation. You, you're deviating from that today. That's not acceptable. Right. Doesn't have to be a ton of bricks coming down on somebody. It's a gentle nudge of reinforcement. That first time is the most important, right? If you if you expect your child to make up their bed or take out the trash or not use ugly words in the household, the first time they deviate from that expectation is when you have to sit down with them and just have a conversation. You don't have to scold. You don't have to punish. You just have to give them a reminder of mm-hmm. where that boundary is. Like I yeah. said a moment ago, you have to do that. The first time it happens, that is the most important one, because if you don't do that, you send confusing mixed messages to that person about uh, about what the boundary is like that. We, we can deviate from the boundary uh, up to three times before we get talked to. No, that's a bad standard. Right. So we always reinforce even when it's minor or a slight deviation. And the first time we deviate or see that deviation is the most important time yes. to have that reinforcement. The tonality that you bring to that, and I'm not being angry or bitter or combative in tone. That is not the tone I'm talking about. But the tonality that you bring needs to reflect the seriousness of the boundary. Mm -hmm. If we have done something particularly egregious and it is a big problem, then I'm going to have a very quiet one-on-one with a matter-of-fact tone very, uh, very dispassionate, right? Like this is how it is. Mm-hmm. Do you understand that? It lose you with any of that. Okay? If it's not something that is profound, then the tone needs to reflect that. Again, mm-hmm. that sends congruent messaging and congruent communication to the people that you're in that relationship with. Mm-hmm. And this is true really for all of our relationships. Yeah. Right. If, if, if my spouse uh, violates one of my, you know, non-negotiable boundaries, and spouses have those as well. Then I have to have a serious conversation. Otherwise, this relationship and the happiness that we hope to have is in jeopardy. Right? Yes. So there it is. That's the quick one on on boundaries. I know that we have a lot more coming with this. <laughs> uh, but anybody else have any thoughts on it? Yeah, no? I think just going on that last point there. You know, I always think kind but firm. Again, Mm. like like children, um, you know, they don't, you know, as a parent, we've all lost our temper. But the more, you know, if I could remember to maintain kindness, that firmness that I can bring along with that, it's like you said, it's a very straightforward approach. Um, But there's no point, you know, especially an employee employer relationship. They're not my child. You know, they're not my spouse. I ha- yes, I have an expectation for what I you know want them to accomplish in their mm. in their job duties. But you know, you also have to remember, like you said, non emotionally. You know, you're you're conveying information about what the expectation is. So you know, just I, I hate to even have to say it, but come on, be kind. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. Awesome, Maria. What's coming up with OMA around the corner? Yeah, so we've got we've got our full webinar planned on boundaries. So if if what you've heard today is something that maybe you need to explore further, uh, maybe you're not sure how to set good boundaries, or maybe if you feel like you've gotten off track and need some advice and help, you know, maybe restoring some of those relationships, um, we plan to have a full webinar on September the 1st at 8 a.m. Central. Um, you can register for that on our website, which is OMA Advisors. 
with an extra S dot com. Um, upcoming for the rest of the year, we're looking at exploring the topics of organizational drift and quiet quitting. Um, so we're really excited about, you know, talking about topics that I think are not generally covered, but can be extremely um, important to small business owners. Um, so, yeah, that's what's coming up. I'm really excited for that organizational drift. That was a concept you brought to my yeah. attention a few yeah. months ago, and I thought that is marvelous. Uh, that's going to give a lot of uh, illumination to people about what's yeah. happening inside of their culture and how things kind of get off track and off the rail. So exactly. uh, listeners, we certainly do appreciate you joining us today. Uh, we are here building businesses by building relationships. And of course, we want to build a relationship with you. If you are a subscriber or one of our Academy members, then certainly want you to stick around for our after hours podcast where they're going to go. We're going to go in a bit deeper on some of the material and concepts we covered today. Until next time, God bless.